it's Rich here at Anglers, and I want to welcome you back to Offshore Week here. Uh, today I'm joined by Captain Jeremy Blunt Hello. and mate Bobby Layton. They are on Wrecker Sport Fishing, um, so boat out of Ocean City. We go back. We've been yep. working together on some stuff like this for a long time, so I'm really excited to have you guys on board. Pretty you guys, days. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, miss those days. Um, but today we're going to talk about bait rigging, so using dead bait. Uh, we don't do a ton of live bait fishing, but mm -hmm. most of it's dead bait. But when we say dead live bait, we're talking about uh, ballyhoo, we're talking about butterfish, we're talking about you know, stuff like that. Yep. Um, so we're going to go over a couple of different rigs that we're going to use for ballyhoo. We're going to show you how to rig them. We're going to show you how to put the ballyhoo on, how to kind of get everything turnkey ready to go. So um, let's get started with it. So um, Bobby, we'll start with you because you got your rigs in front of you there. Right. Um, kind of go walk us through what the basic rig is. Let's talk about leader size, hook size, how it's kind of put together. Go for All it. right, sounds good. So our basic rig, um, everyday tuna fishing, trolling. We have about, I don't know, I'd say 20 to 24 foot of 130 pound mono or fluorocarbon. We use fluorocarbon. Um, and we always use a nine knot, and this one here is a mustad, but that's a nine knot. And the simplest way to do this, instead of tying knots, always crimp your connections, you know, so got your crimp running through your weight, and it's important to have your weight on the hook side because that's where your the uh, the bottom of the gill is on your ballyhoo. So that's going to sit right in there. I'll show you that in a minute. And then rig your piece of wire on there because that's how you're going to keep your bait on the hook. And on the other end... We have got a Spro swivel, and I think that's a 130-pound Spro there. Mm -hmm. Crimped on with a little piece of chafe gear, if you can say that's a really important piece right there. Um, that basically, if anything were to happen, you know, if it pulls real hard, it's just basically keeping it from, you know, wearing and tearing on that, on that line and on the inside of that. So that's one way to do it. And then there's another way, the pin rig. And some guys use rubber bands. Um, other guys use these springs here, and I'll show you in a minute, but pretty much slide your ballyhoo on there. You know, the head sits right here. This goes up through the top jaw, and you slide that pin on, and it holds your ballyhoo in place. But we will show you that here in a second. And then I guess, did you want to talk about your... And we use, we call them wind-ons, and I see it all the time. They have a use the wind ones properly and the rods have to also work properly with the setups on the rod we have in here i can demonstrate when we do ours our rods have big foot guides all the way down so we can minimize our connection here we're going from 50 pound liter or main line to 130 pound liter that way that's pretty simple crimp on each end with your chafe gear like bobby said it kind of lubricates keeps everything from getting getting stuck but when you crank on it and it comes through the rod tip when it's a connection like this, it can't come through easily. It's held up. So one of the tricks I found over the years when the rod tips don't have the rollers, is simply do the same connection, but you spread out each connection. You have a crimp here, and then your spro, and then your other crimp here. So when it comes through the rod tip, it simply goes one, two, three, right through the tip, nice and easy. So it still allows you to have your um, eyes on the rod, but it's also, a way to have the wind on to not have to have the you know snap swivel rigs. Yeah, instead of one big blockage going in at once, yep. you can just spread it out. Even spread it all out. Yep. So you're taking the main line off of here and you're making a loop like that. Your sleeve's Correct. up here. So yep. loop, swivel, loop, sleeve. Yep. Oh, that's Same really deal. cool. I like that idea. And it just lets it, I call it load, come right through it much easier. Okay, all right. Um, a single fish isn't bad, but when you're dealing with multiple fish and you can just but literally crank that hook to the rod tip. Nice. Charter fishing, we've seen them try, but they've yet to get the fish <laughs> through the rod tip. So. Well, wind ones are really important because, you know, mm -hmm. like you said, you can reel that hook right to the end. You know, there's nothing yeah. worse, especially from a mate's perspective, there's nothing worse than line laying on the boat, especially yep. if there's multiple fish yep. on, you got clients in the boat, you got your buddies in the boat. Things can go wrong quick. Yeah. So minimizing that line, wind ons are, are a good thing to run. Yeah, an extremely important thing about wind ones, like when, you know, we've been working on the boat for a while together, so. I know what he's going to do. He knows what I'm going to do. When we get that wind on up, the first thing I do is I can grab onto that wind on and I'm pretty much fighting the fish from, you know, from my hands. The guy behind me is just cranking up the slack and I'm just, I'm holding him. And if he's got to go, you, you can't hold on to him forever. You got to let him go if he's got to go, but you can really help him out at the end game there and just get him up and get him up and get him up. And they can just keep cranking this right on the rod. Like you said, you could keep cranking until the fish is dead basically. And then you right. bring him right up and it's nice. 
game over. So. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a good point. I mean, this is a rigging video, but that's a really good point. You know, team chemistry is really important. Yeah. You know, having somebody who can run the boat well and work really well with the guy at the back of the boat who's handling the fish and the angler, that's, that's definitely a, an important thing. Yeah. Exactly. So we talked about uh, so a basic pin rig and a basic uh, non-pinned rig. Yep. We talked about your wind-ons. What other rigs do you have for us? And then on this side of the table here, we got a little bit different stuff, some marlin stuff here. So that knot right there, that's a snell knot. Okay, so they got it snelled. It always come out the front of the hook towards your tip. I've seen a lot of guys come out the backside, and it's just it's not right. The hook is meant to roll into the fish that way. So they've got their snow hooks here, and then we'll show you how to rig a ballyhoo up on that. Instead of actually putting that through the bait itself, we'll rig the bait separately. So the bait's already rigged, and all you have to do is simply slide that on, and then your bait is sitting right on there. But we'll rig up a couple of them and then show you that in a minute here. So and that's your pretty simple marlin fishing rig right there. Very cool. So this is mainly white marlin. White marlin, Joe. Yeah. And I mean, if you wanted to upscale it, obviously go bigger and stuff for blue marlins. There's a lot of different variations for white marlins, blue marlins, all that stuff. But that's just your your simple circle hook, white marlin, dead bait rig right there. Yeah, and so that, and a really important point to make with that is you definitely want to learn how to do that rig. Because, you know, a lot of guys are like, oh, I'm just a tuna fisherman. I just want to fish for yep. tuna. If you decide you want to get in any of the tournaments off the Mid-Atlantic, the majority of them follow IGFA rules. Yep, circle hook. If there's a billfish category, you're required to use a circle hook for, for marlin, any marlin species at all. Yep. Even if you're just fishing for tuna in that tournament, there's a marlin category, you have to use circle hooks with dead bait. So exactly. definitely want to learn how to do this. So let's get into the ballyhoo. Let's talk all about right. ballyhoo. Let's talk about how to clean them, cool. how to, how to uh, keep them good and healthy while they're, while they're dead. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just kind of walk us through that. So we got some right. ballyhoo here for you. Slide over here. So got your ballyhoo's. All right, so the, what we look for in ballyhoos most of the time is when they, when you have a, you know, obviously you can tell if they're all torn up on the outside. These are pretty clean. You can see that they're not really torn up. Um, the most important thing with it is I see a lot of guys when they're trying to squeeze the poop out of them because that's pretty much, you know, that's what you got to do is get the poop to come out of these ballyhoos. They'll squeeze them so hard, and then you see it on the inside of here, it's just all ripped up. It just looks like looks like a can of cat food or something. So our first step here, though, is pop their eyes out. Go right through their eyes with an arrow. Easiest way to do it. Pull the eyes right out. We'll do a couple of them here. Grab a couple more. Yeah, and this arrow trick's really nice too. You can rig them like this, and then you just kind of leave that hanging on the bucket there with yep. them all separate. You can just leave there. it right there, ready to roll. Let's do one more. So People yeah. ask why you take the eyes out. I said, well, if you don't take the eyes out, they're going to swim away when the fish comes. <laughs> see, got to get the eyes out. They don't see, see what's going to happen. <laughs> all right, so you got the eyes out of there for the most part, and then yeah, like you said, you just leave it hanging pretty nice though you can just grab your scissors and don't cut you know don't cut it too too short i always leave like an inch or so so you have a little bit to play with if you need to cut it shorter you can you know right after it's no problem and now what i do a lot of the times is i will actually cut a slit right here very small slit not big at all just big enough to make it so you're not forcing its guts out if you know what i mean you're just kind of trying to let it come out you know smooth so you don't ruin your bait you don't want to squish your bait up like all right now we'll get to the front part. so now just get there you grab it and just slowly work your hand down there that's all you got to do nothing crazy you'll see guys squishing them like mashed potatoes but come down same with that Oh yeah, get that in there, that's nice. All right, pretty simple stuff. So now that's done, take them off, wiggle them around a little bit. I'm actually gonna set, set these on this rag real quick. And you'll also notice too, like tuna fishing for us, really it's not as important, but you'll see how this fin on this side is back, how it would normally be. 
Okay, you turn it around. A lot of times when they package them, the fin will be forward. For when you're when you're marlin fishing or even tuna fishing, when this bait isn't doesn't have a skirt over top of it, um, it's pretty important to cut that fin off. As you can see, it's going to stick out and it's going to be weird and it's going to make your bait, you know, it's going to make it spiral. It's going to make it swim pretty funky. So cut those off. And then you got, got yourself a bait ready to rig. So what do we want to do first here? You want to do a circle hook or you want to go for the uh, tuna um, rig? What are you thinking? Well, let's work backwards. Let's go with the circle hook here. Okay. All right. So circle hook rig. And I've already got it pre-made here a little bit. But you will actually get yourself a piece of wire. And they make these things. They're O-rings. They make a lot of different O-rings with swivels, all sorts of stuff now. But... The O-ring's the simplest, easiest way to do it here. And we always use 3 8 sinkers. So we'll grab one of these guys out of here. If I can. Grab one of these guys out. And you come right in. You can always you can open their mouth. You can see their top, their top jaw there. So where that crease is is gonna be the easiest spot for you to get that wire. And my hands are super slippery but to get that wire through there a lot of people will be pushing and pushing and pushing and can't and you can see if i open it up it's right in that crease so go all the way through both all the way out the bottom pull it tight so now you have it sitting right there on its head and you want to try and keep it as you know as straight as you possibly can you can twist it a little bit afterwards but slide your weight on and you want the weight to sit underneath of its eyes. That's the best spot for it, right under its eyeballs. Come underneath the gill, over the head, underneath the other gill, through an eyeball, through another eyeball. And then you can come right up behind, behind your O-ring and then in front of your o-ring and then you're simply just gonna finish it off until you run out of wire but you want it to be pretty clean pretty tight you know you don't want to go too tight you don't want to cut in anything and then once you get that pull the scissors out then you go ahead and you can cut your bill off pretty short it doesn't need to be sticking out way long so that's your pretty simple uh you know, marlin fishing, dolphins, tunas, whatever, just your circle hook rig. And now it's fairly easy. Say you get you get a bite, you don't catch a fish, you pop it right off, boom, you're ready to go. You send it right back out pretty quick. Pretty simple stuff. So before you go fishing, make sure you got a lot of them because they do wear out. They're swimming like crazy and all. And then I never break my back. So when I put these, put these baits in the cooler, obviously I don't put the hooks on them. They're all sitting like this. I don't break the backs until I get the fish or until I get my ballyhoo on the hook. And breaking the back is simply just slow, not too, too hard. See, that one's already kind of ripping, but it's all right. Just slowly push on its back and then it'll let it, it'll actually, you know, give it a lot more movement than not having the back broken. And then you got yourself a full blown, ready to go. Marlin rig. That looks beautiful. So, I love it. Ready to go. And like you said, so you can pre-rig a bunch of these and they'll sit just as they are without that hook on. And you can, yep. so let's talk real quick about, you had mentioned how you're going to stack them. So you get a little, you get a tray that you lay into your cooler Yep. and you're going to put them bellies up because the bellies are the softest part. That's what's going to wash out exactly. the, the quickest. Yep. Exactly. And then what are you typically adding to these? Um, depending on what we're doing. So for, for my, for the baits that we're using, especially like in the white marlin oak or any of the tournaments, we have really, really, really good fresh bait. So I won't put anything on and we're going to use that bait one time mm -hmm. you know it's going to be in the cooler just for that day the other you know if we're fishing the next day those baits are going in the freezer for a charter day mm -hmm. and i'm just going to use those baits brand new every day for marlin fishing so my hook baits they don't get any salt nothing if they wear out fast they wear out fast it's no big deal they're going to swim like crazy they're going to look great but my my teaser baits you know for other applications without hooks that we're going to use you know i will salt those baits up pretty hard okay you want a brine or a salt on them just so if something does come up and grab them they're not going to rip it off and okay we got what we wanted and they're they're not going to leave right you know not as easily and they'll last 
you know, maybe four or five hours instead of one hour okay. for an All average right. bait. But if you want to, you can salt them up. It just, it limits their, you know, their swimmability. Right, right. So, okay. That's that. All right, so we got a marlin bait rig. So let's go over to the. Let's. Uh, I'll, I'll let you choose. Maybe whichever right. one's closest. We'll go over to just our, the classic, good old normal tuna rig that we use every day. So pretty simple rig here. Grab us some bait. And this is a little bit different. You open up its gill. I always come in on the right side when I'm when I'm doing it. Go right in. You don't really want to force it in there. You'll feel it. It'll go go pretty, go in there pretty smoothly, and then pop it out of its stomach. This is kind of an important part. If you go too far, if you go too far in like this, your bait's gonna sit like that and it's not gonna swim at all. And if you, you know, if you poke poke the hook out right here, you can't get your weight exactly where you need it. So just wiggle it in there a little bit. Same thing. The weight goes right. The weight goes right there where its eyeballs are right under its eyes and then I come right behind the weight there and tighten her up a little bit and then same thing in front of the weight you can go behind it one more time and now to finish this up it's almost the opposite of starting with the marlin rig you come in through the bottom and come out the top there and then you do the same thing. You just wrap it on down until you run out of wire. And that is your standard average tuner rig. Fairly simple. Slide it. And now if you tracker or yeah, you seaweed or something over Slide time. whatever you want. If you want to leave it naked, you can leave it naked. If you want to slide a skirt or anything over top of it, you can slide it over top. It sits right there. Fairly easy when you're ready to undo it. You just undo your wire, pull your fish off, throw another one on. And these rigs, you can use them every day as long as there's not, you know, chafe and all that good stuff on there. Gotcha. And you're so. still you're still trimming the, the fins, the side fins off of those. Yep. Yeah, you could still cut your side fins off okay. and then trim them off if they're if you really want to, you can. Okay. If 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 you're on a fly and fish are biting, it, it definitely does not matter. Gotcha. But it's just sometimes if you're particular about, hey, I've got a I've got a naked you know, one naked bait and it's got to swim really good. Just cut them off and then pretty okay. simple. Right. Make it makes it swim a little bit better. And mm -hmm. it looks good to me. That's a small belly hoe for white marlin and, and we tuna fish in June when it's good. It's all medium or selects. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yep. You can make them a little bit bigger. Make them bigger. Gotcha. Just, just makes it e it makes it easier for you too on rigging the bait. You know, with your marlin stuff, it's simple to do small baits, but with your tuna stuff, especially the way we'll we'll fish, we'll fish a couple big rods further back and they do have bigger hooks in them so a smaller bait with a really big hook you're just going to rip the bait all up you got to have something with a little bit of okay you know a little bit more meat on there but right. that's perfect for that all right so let's rig one with that pin rig in the spring yeah so we'll move on to the pin rig take that off all right grab my bait and same type of deal we're just going to Poke that hook right through the gill. Come right up through the body. Poke it out. Slide her up. Now this is a little bit different. This pin is actually what's going to hold your bait on. So what you need to do is you need to slide that pin in here and come right up through the nose there. So now you can see it's it's almost the same the same setup except for nothing's holding it on yet so that's why they got these nifty little springs here and all you do is you simply slide that bad boy down twist it on and she's tight and that's it's basically all you got to do for that rig yeah and in this fairly instance, simple the, the spring is just taking the place of the copper wire exactly mm -hmm. yep. a little bit quicker to rig a little easier um you know, a lot of us in the Mid-Atlantic do like rigging it with the copper. We find that you get a little more control about where things sit. You yep. know, that, that spring just kind of like wedges everything together. It is quick and easy. Um, Seems like the reason I, we do the wire, tuna hits and I call it a short bite. It seems like the wire will at least holds some of the fish on the ballyhoo. Mm -hmm. If you jig it, they'll come back and eat it. But like with the pin rigs, sometimes when they hit it, it just pulls it and pulls the head off. Gotcha. And it doesn't swim right. Gotcha. Um, 
So there's your three basic ways of rigging these ballyhoo for, for the majority of the tuna and marlin fishing that we would be doing. And, and yep. like you said, there's some variations here and there with going up in size of baits or, um, you know, if you want to take a circle hook rig, use a larger circle hook for like blue marlin, exactly. um, mm -hmm. you know, with a bigger bait on it. Um, so how often are you changing baits out in the spread? You're trolling throughout the day, you know, it's, it's a fun fishing day. Because I know with offshore, there's, there's like the fun fishing days. And then there's the tournament days. Yeah. And I don't yeah. know for you guys there's the, the, the charter days, but charter for most days. of for most of our clientele, it's it's I'm either fun fishing for the day and I'm not, you know, I'm gonna treat those days a little bit differently. Yeah, I like yeah. to fish every day like at the tournament, but yeah. you know. It's hard to do that way. So how often are you changing your valley who out so, during a given day? Yeah, so every day, just say we're say we're charter fishing, you know, in June where the fishing's pretty good. Say we're probably gonna get, you know, a few bites every couple hours or so. So obviously when you're changing your baits after you get you get a bite you got to change your bait well that bait's good already you know it so keep that in the back of your mind if you just changed your right long 30 minutes ago you don't have to pull that in you know if you're if your left flat has not get bit in your head you want to keep everything out as much as possible so your left flat hasn't been changed for two three hours bring it in if it looks good it's good a lot of baits will go Sometimes a lot of baits go three hours to four or five hours, but I've also had baits you put out and an hour later, you know, you come in and it's like an eel. There's mm -hmm. no tail left. It just washes right out. Mm -hmm. So I would say on every day, just, you know, play it how your every baits hour. are, you know, every, every hour check them out, but play it how your baits are. Just pull one from the right side in, pull one from the left side in. If, the, if a couple look bad, odds are they're probably all not looking too great. So you might as well pull them all in and redo them. Sure. Sea okay. conditions have a lot to do with it too, right? Yeah. If it's flat yep. calm, they can swim all day. Yep. If it's rough, it's not. They getting beat up, and if you're getting beat up, sure, so, sure, work through it. So on a given day, how many baits are you preparing for that day? You know, you're you're going out fun fishing or you know whatnot. Because I know in tournaments we make more because the anticipation. You yeah. know, in the middle of the season it's more versus yep. the beginning and the late part of the season. But on average. How many baits am I preparing beforehand? So on average, on a day of tuna fishing, I will rig three dozen baits, and we've got a freezer on the boat, so we have endless supply of baits. You know, so I can grab a pack of baits and get it done in 10, 15 minutes and rig that totally up. But I'll rig three dozen baits when we're almost strictly tuna fishing. Um, now marlin fishing is a little bit different depending on how good it's been or if there's a lot of dolphins around or anything like that. You know, if, if you're gonna get covered up by dolphins all day you better have 60 baits or else you're you're not gonna have enough right you know you're gonna need them all day long but tuna fishing average day i would say around three dozen baits is probably all you're gonna need okay all right well very cool um i think that about wraps it up for the bait rigging um we hope that you guys enjoyed the video stay tuned for the rest of the week for some more videos we got a lot of good stuff coming up um and then of course at the end of the week we're gonna have you guys back for the live broadcast that we're gonna be doing um, where we're going to be asking all kinds of fun questions about fish in the mid-Atlantic. But really appreciate you guys stopping by and helping out with this today. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to hit us up online. Um, if you have any questions throughout the week that you want us to answer at the live seminar, please feel free to send us some questions and we'll, uh, we'll make sure to field them to these guys. Um, so, uh, Jeremy, Bobby, thank you guys for coming by today. Thank you. Absolutely, thank you. Have a good one, guys. Good luck.